Welcome to the Art of Conscious Living. Today I have a very special guest. Her name is Gloria Wilcox. She's a woman that I have worked with for many years, and have known for the last 15 years, and she has absolutely lives the life of a woman who is allowing love to, to be guiding her life. A woman who is connected to the power of love. And to me, she is a great role model and a great exemplary human being that is just living an extraordinary life. She's 80 years old. No, 79. This year, she will be 80 years old. And she is seen so, so much in her life. And we're about to discuss that with her. And I'm so pleased to have you here today on the show, Gloria. It's my pleasure. I've um, just enjoyed every time I meet you in the grocery store because we've had such deep and meaningful conversations that are really a tribute to your depth and your understanding of life. And I love that because it meets me where I am right now. Um, I've lived a very uh, extraordinary life, as you say. Uh, I was born in the Depression, and I have um, had the opportunity to heal myself of men, everything that all the feelings anybody has ever had. I've had to learn it firsthand, everything about feelings and how to overcome them. And um, I always, I'm, I love to give love. I just love it. It's just, it inspires me. It uplifts my vibes. And it gives me joy to just really give love to everybody that I see. And sometimes I do it silently. And sometimes I express validations. And because I see the goodness of everybody's soul that I meet, that I pay attention to. Well, Gloria, let's define what this energy of love is. Many people have ideas of understanding of what love, what they think it is, but what actually is this love for you? Love is directing the holiness inside me out to another. Love is expressing goodness, and, and love is just a, it's, it's a word every, a lot of people use, but I use it as a connector. I, I connect with who I love, and I give. And, and, it's, and, and receive. And so love is really, uh, for me, energizes me and makes, and makes me feel like smiling all the time. So I'm in love with life because it's been a time of exp expanding my own understanding of life, of love, through um, expressing caring, tenderness, um, other things that are really just just are very t are very special, but many people don't know the excitement of expressing it all all the time. Have you always been connected to this energy of love, or did you find your way to it through oh, different circumstances? My real name is L O V E A. My father named me Labia, uh, and and I have so I have followed that um, kind of I. Um, philosophy and I first was attracted to Jesus and the, learned the Jesus teachings and they made so, uh, they were guiding me all my life so I didn't learn this because I wanted to learn it I I came with it I came all ready to go out there and change the world by by my own example and my own teachings I developed a seminar company and uh, in Palo Alto and and I had pioneer teachings. The, my only competition was EST when I started this work. And it was really wonderful to, be, to see the people down in Silicon Valley begin to open their hearts and, and to let their eyes show the animation instead of be, being like little robots. So when you say EST, that's the uh, learner er, er, program. Er, er, yeah. And it later turned to become uh, the form. That's right. So, and that was your competition. Yeah, it was my only competition because there, there weren't many seminars. But I started out and with, from from a direction from inside my soul, and um, it was I had too many students the first class, so I just began to I met I met a need, and um, what I taught was how to heal yourself from any of the traumas that you had as a child. 
and especially with the first uh, 12 years of life. And I taught them how to release the pain and the agony and the angst. So they were able to be, feel strong and capable and find their own life purpose because they had released a lot of anger, a lot of hurt, a lot of feelings that were not productive. And then they were free to follow spirit. And that was my dream, to help people follow spirit. I don't use dogma at all, but just, just follow the love that's in your heart. And the most important thing that I think I ever learned was all the hurt and hate and things that I saw and, and came across and were feeling, all of them had, were the blocks to the love that we, I yearned to love and to be loved. Um, so it's been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience to see people many years later who still are talking about what I, what I taught in uh, beginning in 1975. And it was exciting because they wrote me letters all, all these years on how they applied what I taught. And I've been given credit for a lot of people not getting divorced because I taught them how to release the pain and, at early pain. Um, one of the most exciting people I dealt with was um, a woman who divorced her husband and, and then she came to my class, she, she learned that she was projecting onto him all unfinished business. So he, so we did a process where they, this, they identified um, where, they, where the patterns came from and, and then released that pattern emotionally uh, through a few techniques. And what happened is that she remarried her husband because she learned that she was projecting onto him old unfinished business and a lot of people kept on telling me, no one meet, meets my needs. Well, we, or when, our unmet need, when our needs are not met as a, as a child, we're going to ask everybody in the world to meet those needs. And so she discovered that she was just asking him to be what her parents couldn't be. And that released her so that she was able to see him for who he was, see the man she had fallen in love with. And they went... He was from um, Greece, and they went to Greece, and they started a dancing school, and she always wanted to be a dan dance teacher. So it, it took the release of anger for her to find her dream and to marry her dream. And he was a wonderful man, and she was a wonderful woman. But, you know, marriage intensifies, relationship intensifies what we um, need to learn. And so she saw that she was really causing all this uh, reaction in her own body. And when she, she was so pretty and, and it's such a lovely woman that when she released all these unfinished businesses, goes back down to the first, even the first year of her life or even birth. And she, she just was so excited to fall in love again. That's a beautiful story. Gloria, you've lived a very full life and you've seen so much on the outer and inner. Mm -hmm. uh, you've lived through the world, um, United States depression, the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. You lived through uh, World War II, mm -hmm. a new century now. And also you've had your uh, own challenges on physical that we all have mm -hmm. and we all go through. Right. And in saying that and going through all of that, it's remarkable, as I've known you for the last 15 years, that none of it has dampened your spirit. No, I would love to be alive and to be animated and, and joyous. It seems to me that you used all of this and more to rejuvenate yourself. To, I did. To express yourself. Well, the way I see it is that you are going against the majority of the people. I am. It's kind of like lonely, but, but I have the companionship of spirit. Mm -hmm. And whenever I come into one of those little places where I'm, people don't understand, because I'm very unusual, and um, I finally, I'm really actually 79. Um, I you will be 80 this year. In yeah, December. at the end of the year. In December. Forgive me, the whole, it'll be this year. Yes. So I really, I, I'm very content, very content, because I 
have called upon spirit for every every answer and and I got a lot of wisdom that way um, I just finished a book in October um, called Soothing Angels and in that book I wrote up a, a lot of things that happened to me and how I overcame them and one of the big biggest things in my life was a head-on collision on the, on the freeway. And you were how old at that time? Uh, what? How old were you when this head-on uh, collision? Uh, 30 something, 33. Okay. So um, I was a passenger and uh, hit, hit my head on the dashboard, metal dashboard. And um, so I just had to ask for spirit to help me because I was in agony with dizziness for six months. And so and, and I didn't like to feel dizzy, but the dizziness pushed me to become centered and to really breathe deeply, breathe deeply so that I could release the agony. And um, You had to be determined in what you were thinking and every movement so that forced you to get more in alignment with yourself. That's right. And it was the most agonizing experience I've ever had because the dizziness is, for six months is very hard. but. You know, I, 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 at the end of that time, I said it was the best thing that happened to me because what had happened is the, my inner being came alive and um, I, um, I, I, lear I learned so much. And, I saw, and what, what head injuries do is they, they give you a lot of anger. So what I had to do is get rid of that anger and I had a principles not to dump on anybody. And so I kept on releasing the anger and the hurt and learned a lot about myself and others because we're all universally got the same kind of feelings. We just have them rearranged in different places. So I learned to be very empath empathic and empathy, lots of empathy. And I learned about the whole, the soul. And, and, and so I was so determined to help people release the blocks to the goal, to, to joy, because I'm a naturally joyful person. And even though I had a lot of abuse as a child, I was, I took, I was accountable. I kept on getting, it's, you, it's, you, you just take, take the responsibility, release the pain and, 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 and enjoy the, what you learn. I've learned so much because I, that opened up me up, that opened me up. And so I just had access to all the feelings in the world. Well, it sounds like a very Christ-like energy of what you're describing. Well, I'm not referring to the organized religion. I'm talking I'm about not, the life of Christ. And I'm sure you can identify that's right. with what we're speaking about. Yes, that, that's true. That it's, it's, Christ was an example of everything that you're talking about. Well, and you seem to be living that example <laughs> and, and showing this and being this example of that. Well, and five, getting all the, reaping all the benefits of it. Yeah, well, when I was five, um, I said, I want to be just like Jesus, which was a, a big thing to say. And, you know, it really, I've had to really face everything, all, everything. Um, so, um, it's, you know, my father was a minister, and um, the happiest memory that I remember is he, cho he used my doll for Jesus. Uh, in the Christian, in the, in the uh, scene uh, at Christmas Eve. And um, so I really did identify with the spiritual values early in life. I think it came fully packed with that kind of, those kind of attitudes. And um, I'm grateful for that. It saved, it was like, it saved me a lot of time because I got the issues. And I think my parents were challenged by me having some knowing that was beyond my age, so that was a challenge I had to uh, uh, go through. Gloria, I also know you that you're an ex extraordinary person with an incredible gift, and your gift is, um, I call it, effective sensory perception, known wow. as e extra sensory That's perception. That's a good word, yeah. But I call it effective sensory perception because you are so connected to your natural uh, innate spirit. That's true. That you're able to know things. And I've had sessions with you in the past years, and it's uncanny how accurate you are. 
<laughs> and I know that you were doing that for a while, but tell me about how you first connect it to this energy and when you start doing this work. Well, the head-on collision just opened me up and um, I got prophecy and all that. With anybody I knew, I would ask questions and I would get for things ahead of time. So I give the accident a credit for this. Um, that's, it, it just changed my life. I was, I've never been the same. And you know, the pain fades, but the gr gratitude I have for the knowledge that I learned is always with me. And um, I just, have, I'm a natural at, at uh, ES, what, ESP. And, um, and the thing is, I did not try to become natural at it. It just was a part. And I think, I, I know I had the gift before because my father and mother have the gift too, but they didn't like it. They didn't like the gift. But I, I've always used it for the good and it's always been, uh, I'm always in awe and wonder that what happens. I don't, you know, you have to be pure hearted to do this the way that I do it because you can't do it from ego because it, it's not pure enough. So not doing, being pure hearted and, and- An open vessel. And what? An open vessel. An open, I'm, I am an open vessel. Yes. And I have fun doing that. That is really fun to be of service. My biggest thing is be of service. I like to be, of, I like to give, I like to, and one of the things that I think is happening is a crisis in our country is people are not givers. They're, it's, it's, we've got a lot of takers. And, but the love that I feel when I do sh sh share uh, something to elevate the person or to help them go through a crisis and it, it's just incredible. It's hard to talk about it because it's, it's so wonderful. And just becoming a, a lover for the, of the world because I do love being here. And I'm, my next book will be on, on um, contentment. And I've been asking a lot of people how content they feel. And, and many people don't feel content. But I, I think the secret is you have to release the angers, resentments, and just be wholehearted for love. I'm wholehearted for love and I, I'd like more people to join me because it's sometimes lonely to not, to not um, you know, the, the give and take is really aborted in our country right now. Gloria, what is your idea about being in the moment, the, being in the moment of presence, being in the moment of now? That's where, that's all I am, you know. I, uh, that's happening more and more as the older I get. I'm in, in the now. And, um, and people who think they're in the now, they're really not in the now. They're in the they now, don't know intellectually, what it is. Intel, now intellectually. Because they're in the intellectual, so they're not really understanding what the now is. Yeah, yeah. But what is, give me your definition of what it is to live in the now of the moment. I feel in, into you. I feel you. I, feel, I bring you into my heart for the time that, that, that we're here. So it's just an attitude, really an attitude of, of wanting to be get, of service and to be, give, to give. Um, you know, most of my thing, my behavior is just from following spirit. And uh, so it's, you know, I, I, I made some conclusions after having many of these different experiences. Um, and made, and I, at night after my accident, people, I would hear, dream and I would get a lot of wisdom that came. So I'd wake up in the morning and write down my new, new understanding. And that happened every night for a long time. And that was really a good payoff, you know, to get that wisdom without having to go to some to school or, or books. But I did go to the University of Michigan and graduated. And that's where I met my husband, who um, was a wonderful man. And um, one day, I, I want to tell this story about that, because a, it's a real story of faith. Um, one day, I had ended the senior, um, sophomore year at college, and um, I took a walk and I said, where, God, where is the man I'm to marry? 
and um, I heard in my inner ear, Ann Arbor, Michigan. So I called my mom up and I said, I'm going to Ann Arbor next year. And uh, so I did. And I went to the University of Michigan uh, to, to a uh, spiritual party. And a man asked me out. He said, I'd like you to double date with my roommate, we'll go to the Glee Club concert. So his roommate happened to be Bob Wilcox, who was a beautiful man, good man, wonderful. And um, he had red hair. And, and the payoff was, I looked like his mother. More, I looked like his mother more than anybody I had ever known. And, he, and uh, everybody that saw us together said that. And um, so his mother really was so happy to have me in the family. We weren't even engaged when I met her, but he, she, she took me in as though I were a, a, a member of her family. And she had three, four boys, so I was her first girl. So finding, finding my husband through spirit was a delightful experience. I never would have met a man like that. How long were you with your husband? Uh, 25 years. And, and um, then you had a uh, divorce? Or? Well, I had a divorce. Not, I've, I've never thought about it as being per really personal, but um, he uh, was a company president down in Silicon Valley, and he um, couldn't get another job being a PhD and a company president. So he went and decided that he would have to go back to Ann Arbor where we met. We came out here on, to, to get, to, for him to get a doctorate at UCLA. So we were here a long time together. And he was a good man, and uh, I'm grateful that Spirit directed me to him. And you had two children together, two beautiful yeah. boys. Well, one, one, one was born on the day of my grandmother's death day, and one of them, the other one was born on the other, his grandmother's death day. Are they supportive of your you know, work they, that you um, do and your my son effective did. sensory perception, the ESP. They they don't understand it, and, and uh, but they 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 do consult with me and ask me questions, but you know they they got a little rebellion about that, but you know I I and I've the never, rebellion would be because they're not understanding it or they, I don't know you know they just they, I I didn't control them a lot I let them have a lot of freedom, so in their free thinking they. They um, chose another path, but I, I want to say that they did that because I had permission from them. I gave them permission to do what they wanted to do, and um, so. And my husband was very that same way with the kids. That we trusted that they would learn and be who they were in, meant to be. Are you in contact with your ex-husband now? He, he's you, non, not alive. He, he, he died. He passed on. Yes. Okay. Yes. But we were good friends always. I'm grateful. And one time I went to see, I run, won a ticket to where he lived, and I go out there and I, and I said, I just want to forgive you for anything I ever did that was inappropriate. And um, I just want to, and I, we had a, a, a four hour conversation. A love. It was just so loving, and I felt so happy that I had gone there. I wanted to have nothing between us. And he said, "You know, you were. It was that that I couldn't find a job, and, and he thanked me for allowing him to follow his own uh, need to to be where he needed to be." So I'd like to speak about the thought that in society where. The collective energy is thinking and shared that if you are connecting to your basic goodness, uh -huh. that's showing weakness, <laughs> basically. Now, isn't that interesting? I mean, really, uh, it's an interesting reflection upon the world. And how do you deal with that when you, you see know, people who are subscribing to that thought where they are lost in their anger, they're lost in their pain, they're lost in their suffering, they're lost in disappointment. What would you say to these people if you could? As well, I only wait, I only, um, I don't try to talk anybody into anything mm -hmm. because, but if they are around me and they can feel my love, 
it's it does uh, has brought a lot of people towards me that would not normally be open. So I just really apply the principles of love and giving, and but I do not uh, try to change them unless they give me permission. Well, come to my class or uh, hire me for a consultation, and. Um, so, but when they pass you by, what? It, when people pass you by, and you feel their energy that they are in this energy of of, of feeling that they're lost and they're in in anger and disappointment, how do you how does that feel inside your body? Well, it feels sad. I know I know how it was when I was not uh, connected, and um, when I, but you know I. I wrote in my book to, um, how to heal many of those things, and I became a specialist on releasing the hurt of the inner child. And um, so I have some tools if they are receptive. And um, I, um, I'm a validator and encourager, but I'm not a coercer. And uh, so they, people, people came to me in Palo Alto Refer, referred by their 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 friends, and so I I haven't tried to change the world, the part of the world that is not that is not personally connected to me. Um, I pray a lot. I pray to relieve for for a loving prayer to them, giving them the feelings of being cared for, nurtured. Um, that's, I, I don't try to change people because pe anytime you try to change somebody, you get the defense system gets up there pretty strong. And, um, but I rather give people love than I would to give them, uh, to ch make, give them a challenge to make them change. And by giving them love, you're, what is the actual method? What are you actually doing? It's more like in what my happens? heart. My heart says, I just enfold them, I just give them heart. Give them a bit of heart. It doesn't, you know. And I, I smile a lot. It's, I never, under, I mean, it, I just smile a lot. And you know, people, I walk down the street and I'm smiling. I don't, I'm just smiling because God is good and the world is wonderful. And you know, it's painful. It, it, it's a lot of pain, but um, I'm doing my right. I'm doing my work by loving, and and uh, and encouraging and. And some people will, they've never, they'll, I'll give them a sentence like they're walking, they're some, and they'll never forget that sentence. They will never forget that sentence of wisdom. Okay. So I, I know what my responsibility is. And, and I, my first responsibility was to heal myself, just really understand the, the, the human mind and the human emotions. I had a family that was uh, very stimulating to, to, for me to heal, because I didn't, I didn't fit. I did not fit, and I'm an unwanted child. My father didn't want children. The money was um, short in the depression, so I've had to overcome those feelings of not being love, not feeling love. And you know, a lot of people that have uh, watched me, they they ama are amazed how I could go through these things and still keep a happy heart. And that's really important um, to, and you, but it first takes that you have to have, uh, that you have to um, identify what, what's, what's aroused your hurt or hate or whatever, and then release it, release it, speak, speak it, speak it out. A pillow is a really good thing that can't speak back, but just to hit the pillow and, and say the things that hurt you and, 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 after a little while, you calm down and you begin to feel, hmm, I can forgive my parents for being who, whatever they, and, and then I can love. The love comes really when we have dispensed much of that anger. And you know, the anger is the, is the key. And uh, in my class, we had, an anger, we had some anger sessions. And every time, any, I call it, anytime you get aroused from anger, you, you go can go to the pillow and speak, speak the words that just come, 
I hate you because you control me. I can't stand it because you, you just are never there for me. Uh, just keep on speaking. And the, but they're, with the intention you want to heal, then the, the feelings about love come back. They come back. But it's the hurt and hate that make the heart calcified. And um, My father-in-law was a psychiatrist. And he had um, a disease, a t TB, during the war when he was in an intern. And he ended up with a calcium, calcium, calcium around his heart, which was to protect him. But he, it, it, it was, but I always think of that calcium around everybody's heart, that we have the defense system, you know, et cetera. And that keeps us, from getting close to people. There's a lot of fear of getting close to people because they might even see who we are. Well, the truth is, every time I've gotten any close to anybody and they showed them everything I was, they loved me more. And, it's, and uh, so I, I, every time I get defensive, I see a red light and I, I just don't let that go, stay on because I want, I want the go button. I want to go and I'm going, I mean, I hear I, I'm just newly 75, and I am getting ambitious about a lot of things that I can do as an elder, and I'm having fun, and, and life is just opening up to me. And people who haven't talked to me for a long time since I moved away from Palo Alto 20 years ago are calling me for some reason or another. It's just like we're coming back together in, in, uh, in etc. So there's a feeling of just allowing yourself to slow down and be in touch with your natural feelings. Yes. And honoring those feelings. Yes. And allowing these feelings to 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 move through you mm -hmm. without trying to control them. That's right. Just by watching the feelings and speaking them, speaking them. Um, but not to, not to dump, no dumping. We had a sign in my class called no dumping. Because, you know, if you express... Dumping would be... Dumping your anger to, on another person. That is another in, word could be projecting. Your, projecting and, yeah, we're doing it all the time. But, but um, just not letting the dump, not let yourself be hateful and hurtful and... and uh, you know, we're having an increase in murders and stuff like that. Well, people are going to, are having such a hard time now. I mean, the money situation always screws up the whole public. So, um, but I, but doing that as a preparation before to have, a, to let the loving heart express itself. And the energy that comes from the loving heart is so um, elevating. And and uh, and good for the body. You mentioned that there was a, perhaps a period in your time of your life that you did not honor this so much with inside yourself that you had you got more familiar with it later. Mm -hmm. What was it like to be who you are today and the way you were then? Well, I was bored. One thing was boredom. Um, I was. Um, not happy, I was, uh, and I decided at that time that I had to learn how to communicate. So I really took an intensive course uh, in learning how to talk, how to speak. What uh, period of time of your life that was, was that? was probably about, the, uh, about, thir about 13. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I learned how to speak and to speak appropriately and um, so appropriately would be to honor yourself, to express yourself, to what you like, what you don't like, mm -hmm. your needs, your boundaries. Yeah, your, um, that's right. To and get in touch with who you are. That's right. Yes. My class was wonderful because it brought together a lot of people of common mind, and that was really good. So that's when you were 13. So how long did that last? 13, I don't remember. What That you were bored, you were feeling not yeah. connected to yourself. Um, how many years did that go on for? I don't remember. It was um, the time that I really... Approximately, was it? 
I into think your I, early 30s or probably, was it? I was beginning to awaken in my uh, 20s, but uh, in the 30s, I think that the accident really pushed any discontent I had, made it me understand it, and, and I would ask spirit, where did this come from, and you know, et cetera. I think when we're not being ourselves, when we're not being real, when we're not being true to ourselves, it's, a little, it's boring. And then people, gen, pe most people, fill it up with a lot of drugs and stuff like that. But yeah, a lot of frustration happens. And frustrations. So I just happened to be very aware, and I wasn't going to let that happen any very much. And I had a lot of determination. I'm a Capricorn. <laughs> so um, I wanted to, I wanted to really fulfill my destiny. I wanted to. I, I was trying to trying to really be myself, and and being real. Sometimes people misunderstand that the real means that they could say anything. Well, it, it's to the accountability is one, something that many people forget when they're talking about that. And um, well, so I always let's speak on that. What on does the, that well, mean to be more accountable? Okay. Well, what? my dad was a blamer, and I didn't like that. So I decided I would never blame anybody inappropriately, because I saw in, in pursuing that, that it was only me mad at someone because I, I was um, not taking responsibility for myself, for my own, I, I was, my, I was copying, my father was the blamer and I didn't want to be a blamer, so I just had a lot to learn. And we moved a lot, I lived all, we lived all over the country uh, during the war the Second World War, and um, so I, I had a lot of determination to fulfill my destiny. And in my life right now, it's so exciting to see everything fall in place. Just everything is falling in place, and, it's, and I, that's been that way for at least 20 years. But. Um, there's, you know, it's the dissatisfaction left me when I began to really put this all together. I think the time that was the greatest satisfaction for me in my life was 1975 when Spirit said, <clears throat> excuse me, Spirit said, you're to start doing some work to teach how, what you've learned. And um, so I did, and uh, the classes were really fun. and. I would speak, speak, and this thing, things I never heard before came out of me. So I was really in deep um, ability to connect with spirit. So it's been fun. It's been really fun to be myself and to learn the, the being real really, really tapped into us power beyond what I could imagine. Being real. And it wasn't popular back when I did it. I was ahead of time. So. It wasn't popular to be yourself? No. They talk a lot about, about it now more, but it wasn't pop popular to be authentic. And that was the decades of the 40s, 50s? Well, no, the 40s weren't so... 50s, I graduated from high school. So you weren't... It, the times that the, it was not to be yourself, it was more to be fitting in and to yeah, be, yeah. To be yeah. more of the Had collective and the, and the cultural and the social that's right. of what was going on. So I began to wear no black, and that was when I was really, <laughs> that was just because I love color and, and uh, I wasn't like everybody else who was wearing black. Mm -hmm. and Where do you see our society today? I mean, you can look back and see the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, up until the present time. We're in a new century. Where do you see the world as it, as it is today, from your well, perspective? I have a feeling we're going to go downhill with all these angers and resentments and fighting and stuff to the place where something will big will happen and we'll have a time when we'll have losses of many people and then we'll, we'll come back to the golden times of love. That's what I... That's what the story I've heard about inside, from my inside for a long time. So it will be getting worse before it will be getting better, but it has to get worse 
for the tipping point to happen where things start to correct themselves. Yeah, and a lot of people are interested in spiritual things, and, and that is really helping. That's the, the edge we're on now. A lot of people are meditating and, and addressing these spiritual issues. And, um, you know, it has to, why would you grow if you didn't have to, if you didn't, ha if, didn't if there were, you weren't motivated? Um, so I think things are looking up right now. There's uh, plus the people are going down are getting more violent. There's there's like the, the, the dividing into two camps right now, the good and the and the angry. And the good, are, good and the angry, yeah. The, okay, the good and the angry. There's there are, uh, there's a separation happening where that's really true. It's basically people who are of of hope and of love, mm -hmm. they are defining themselves and the people who are of the other, who are in confusion and a lot of pain, yeah. they are, there's a separation happening, a natural right. separation yes. and a natural recognition of each other. Yes, so I pray that more, more and more people will, will be able to express themselves spiritually and bring about some healing of the anger. If I think if we had one course to mandatory course would, to help heal the world would be release your angers. And, and because the love is natural. We all have the capacity to love. But if we can release the detriments to it, the resentments and then things will really change. I don't think we're in, we have I mean, the thing that I talked about, I don't think that's really ha going to happen unless people, enough people don't get healed. So. Well, we are born in love and we learn mm -hmm. and we take on anger. That's we're not right. born in anger. No, we're, that's right. So it's about recognizing that and mm -hmm. letting the stories go and not dying with the stories and not dying in our mm -hmm. pain and our yeah. confusion. And separating all of that and knowing that we can allow ourselves to be in a beautiful, loving, organic process of being. And that's the vision. That's the vision. That if uh, enough people get the vision, releasing anger and, and bringing more love all the time into your life, we'll, we'll have a, a golden era of, of love. And that's my, my dream. to. As many, give as many people as I can tools to be loving. In all the past decades, has there been any of this golden air or this sense of being that we're speaking about? Has that happened in the past, perhaps in the 60s? I think there was the birth of some good, some very good things in the 60s. I'm sorry it didn't keep on. Um, I think it got pulled down by some the drugs, but. Uh, I'm not a historian. I'm a lover. So, uh, um, I, I what were you experiencing in the '60s? I was taking care of kids. My boys were born in '60 and '61. And where were you? In mm -hmm. Palo Alto. Okay. Right where. So the, you were close enough to San Francisco, where it was. We the, were right in the middle. All the hippies and and the hate uh, Sperry and all they were they were on. bombing buildings in Palo Alto. Bombing buildings? Yeah, d deteriorating, yeah. Oh, and that was a rebellion of mm -hmm. the Vietnam yeah. War that was about to happen. Yeah, so, you know, the rebellion energy can be turned into love energy with some uh, shifting of uh, taking accountability and releasing the anger. If we could do that one day a week, it would the world would really change. Um, but all I know is, uh, the ones that have consciousness and are getting the vision from inside are the ones that w will be the leaders. Well, would it be fair to say that in the 60s and even at the present time that people are trying to revolt and yeah. that's not really the answer. It's not about revolting against something or it's going against something or, having, being, or having marches. It's no. about just connecting on an individual level and That's then right. sharing that with others. Yeah. And as you share that with others, then 
it becomes more of a of, of a natural process that's happening as right. individual rights that we're expressing our basic goodness that's right and basic goodness is so is a pure state of feeling good you know when when you feel that purity of your soul it's a different world we make our own reality in the is a common phrase but we make our own life with that with that purity that purity that quality of pureness and kindness and and um, tenderness tenderness is so fun so th those are the things that I, I I call to those who are open to really be more kind in fact I, I say often to people thank you for being kind because you've helped my day. You made my day a better day. Just thank you for being helpful. Thank you for being seeing seeing another person and really feeling their heart. Thank you for being loving. Thank you for being a model of, of grace. That's so easy if you don't have all the ver the anger in the in the belly. I'm having a sense that this uh, energy of being in the now, in the moment, is about always not allowing the stories to control us, but more than that, it's being in the experience of that moment, being lost in it and completely consumed in it, and not holding any of the energies that, that we want to get fixed on. A lot of people get fixed and they their minds get fixed on ideas of emotions and then that emotions carries on for years and in being that fixed ideas they're not in the moment anymore they that's right completely that's right they're completely lost yeah. and they don't know how lost they are but you know if you ask to become aware then we know we're lost taking the time to really reflect and on our our feelings is so such a it doesn't cost anything, and it's a wonderful healing. So when you say ask, what, what are you actually doing? Uh, connecting with spirit. And, and for those who have not done that and are not familiar with doing that, how, does, what do, they, how do they start that? So, how do they start to connect to their own spirit? Well, making a commitment, energy? making a commitment, making a commitment to becoming better, a better person. Making a commitment. I did, I made commitments every time that I um, sat down, a commitment. And the commitment was to always be a better person, be the best person I can be. That was my, how I made my commitments. And I love your example of just waking up and saying that you're gonna be determined to be happy today. That's right, and so you it's know, so simple to do. There's nothing complicated about but, that. But, it, but Make how, an incredible intention of that. That's right. So waking up and being loving would, makes our makes our body feel better. So it it's you know the greatest things are simple, but but we complicate things always. So. Um, I'm so thrilled that I was here with you today. It, it, it inspires me to go even deeper. And, and how deep do we want to go? What, what oh, could, what you, know, could, what I could don't you know. possibly imagine? This is an intellectual question, and I'm a feeler. And so, uh, you know, I just want to be a good person in the world and, and fulfill my destiny. So, so when you say intellectual, it's not about being of the practical mind. You allow it just to happen naturally. But when you're connecting to your goodness and your natural sense of yourself, that everything takes care of itself. Yes. Oh, man, yes. that's really good. Very good. I, yes. Very beautiful. What final thoughts would you like to share that is very dear to you? I want to thank all the people that were patient with me when I was growing up and learning these things. I want to, you know, I was challenging people at, at conferences and all that kind of stuff. And Brute Joy was, came through as a hero uh, the way he was 
Uh, and who was he? He was a teacher uh, that a lot of people uh, liked. And know. his name is? B-R-U-G-H-J-O-Y. So thank everybody that has supported me in my growth. I just want to thank, say that publicly. The patient people, people that understood that I, uh, that I was just trying to learn. So just thank, th I want to thank all of them. And in that vein of being very humble and very open, it's empowering you and it's keeping you very polarized in this presence of moment and time. How beautiful. Thank you. Gloria, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. And all the very, very best to you. And thank you for all your beautiful, beautiful divine work that you yeah. do. And may the angels be with all of us all the time. Thank you. And from the art of conscious living, do take care of yourselves and take care of others.